Vinyl community, welcome back. Here we are, another video. Hope you had a good week since the last one. Um, I'm gonna try to put these out on a weekly basis um, and we'll see how we go, no promises, but um, here we are, another video. Um, I was sort of torn between getting this video done while it was fresh in my head or waiting a bit and listening to the records in more detail to give you a better um, feel for what they are, but I thought it's best to go with what's in my head first of all. So this video is gonna be a bit longer than it normally would be. I'm gonna split it into two parts. So the first bit will be me talking about the Lines of Flight uh, festival I went to uh, last weekend. And then the second half will be the records, the vinyl I picked up uh, while I was there over the four days. So um, yeah, the, the first part is I, I had, have been very lucky to go to a, I guess it's a, a noise and experimental music festival that ran for four days um, down in Dunedin in the South Island. Um, the home of some of my favorite record labels there being a uh, Flying Nun and Expressway. Um, and there's quite a few artists that played on some of those records that were playing um, at the shows and they were around. I've got the, uh, the poster here from the show, uh, Lines of Flight. So there was four shows, a uh, Thursday night, a Friday night, and a Saturday lunchtime and Saturday evening show. So um, the first night was in Dunedin itself, and then the rest was out at Pioneer Hall in Port Chalmers, uh, which is sort of a 15-minute drive away. Um, but they did put on some uh, free buses. So yeah, uh, overall, I, I had an amazing time. Um, one of the really fun things, aside from the music, was uh, all three members of the vinyl community that make videos in New Zealand were together in the same spot for the first time, uh, which was really cool. So I got to hang out uh, quite a bit with uh, Rodney Erickson, uh, Un Uncle Rodus, or Rodus 1000, and um, Counting the Beat, Chris Walker, who's been making videos for probably longer than me, I think. Um, so that was really cool. So I got to uh, spend a lot of time hanging out with those guys and we had, we had a lot of fun, a lot of good music chats, um, some good record digs as well. But yeah, uh, I, it was um, a really great weekend. Um, the, first, the first night was probably more about uh, ambient experimental music and atmospheres, whereas the, um, the later ones had, uh, you know, drone rock bands and noise bands and stuff like that. So um what I'll do as I talk about my highlights, I, I, I personally didn't take that many video. I didn't take, really take any videos or I took a couple of blurry photographs. Um, but I reached out to somebody uh, on Facebook who runs a page called Dunedin Sound, which I'll put the link to the website um, in the video below. And um, they took some amazing photographs and some really great audio and video clips. So what I did, I asked for their permission if I could use that, that stuff and they were more than happy for me to put them into the video. So I'll be inserting some photographs along the way in the video and some video clips to, to get across what I'm trying to go for here. But um, yeah, I, I, I guess for me, um, but going in, I was really excited to see um, a, a legendary uh, free noise uh, New Zealand band called A Handful of Dust. Um, which which definitely didn't disappoint. Um, I was uh, I was blown away. That 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 features a bit of a super group of uh, Alistair Galbraith, somebody I've talked about many many times before. Uh, Bruce Russell and. Um <laughs> most impressed about almost looking forward to see but they didn't end up being my favorite but they were in, in the top three um they're a band you should definitely check out i think there's stuff on youtube uh they recently released a compilation of their greatest hits 
Um, the, the, the other band I was really impressed with, well, the band that surprised me the most was this band here called Sewage with Jeff Henderson. Um, my friend who I went down with um, told me Sewage are a really great band. I'd never heard of them before, so I didn't know what to expect. And they ended up being one of the most wild free jazz shows I've seen in a very, you know, maybe since I saw The Thing. Matt Gustafson's band, or maybe even more so, I was just absolutely blown away. There's a, a the vocalist there; she was uh, screaming into the microphone and then playing saxophone, and alternating between screaming and howling, and then just blasting into into the mic with like a bass. Um, I think it was like a bass clarinet, not a saxophone. Um, so it was this really weird mix of. Uh, so 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 you had her doing that, and her voice was quite high pitched, but her screams were just so. They come from a very deep place. It wasn't like um, aggression screaming. It was just a really haunting. It was very hard. It was very, uh, just very moving. So you had that and you had the drummer and you had Jeff Henderson, who um, has played in a lot of New Zealand jazz releases. He sort of runs the Audio Foundation up in Auckland. Um, is the main person behind that. I've seen him play a few times. Um, he really didn't overpower the band. He's not normally in it. They're normally a, a duet, I think. And uh, yeah, just, I was blown away. I was absolutely blown away. Um, yeah, one of the best free jazz shows I've seen. Um, so that was really cool. Roy Montgomery, who's a bit of a legend. I wasn't as blown away as a lot of people were with that one. Um, I did really enjoy it, though. He's got a very unique sound that you can hear what he's doing straight away. Um, Gate, uh, Michael Morley is the other member of the Dead Sea. He played a, a solo um, sort of experimental acoustic. It was acoustic, It was amplified acoustics. Um, it was very... Um, I was very tired, and I think I almost fell asleep, but in a nice, relaxing way. Um. Yeah, I I were really great. Cart uh, negative Nancy's, and then uh, yeah, I really this is my second favorite was the Carter Morley Yates. So Michael Morley of the Dead Sea, who I mentioned, is also the name behind Gate and uh, Robbie Yates, the drummer, and Shane Carter, um, is is a bit of a legend here in New Zealand. Played in many many bands. Um, played obviously in uh, Straight Jacket Fits, Dimmer, Board Games, uh, the Double Happies. Uh, I'm probably missing. I think that's all of them. Um, 
but that was really cool uh, to, to see them play together. Um, that's probably the closest sound to the Dead Sea I've heard. Um, just this really deep rumbling sound, um, just really earth moving, really deep, and they were just really going for it. Um, they, but both guitars were just really pushing in each, each other, and they were really, it, it, there wasn't much in terms of complementing, but it was just this massive guitar fight not a fight because it's not they're not doing guitar solos they're just pumping out so much noise and uh, dissonance and texture between them um and it sort of did feel like they were really pushing against each other and then uh, robbie yates the drummer in the middle of it, it just it just created a really great dynamic with the three of them uh yeah i, I was really happy with that um but yeah I, I saw some really cool stuff lots of music to check out um I was amazed by how many uh, legends of the New Zealand scene were around. It was a very small festival. You know, I'd say there was at the maximum 100 people in the hall itself. Uh, and I feel like at least 30 of those were either, you know, 30, I would say maybe even half were musicians or were in ran record labels or were friends of band members or were playing on the day. So, um, some very very strange moments in a nerdy way um where I'm, you know i'm standing next to shane carter who's a bit of a legend and i had a bit of a moment with him and on my other side is roy montgomery so it's just it's, it's a really cool um small scene down there um, of really talented amazing musicians and it was a it was a, it was a strange thing where sometimes i sort of geeked out a little bit at the people around me and then other times you know they're just musicians uh so yeah, I, I was really excited to be down there. I bumped into some people um, that I'd known th uh, through Facebook and met a couple of people there that I was quite happy to finally meet. Um, and then, yeah, also had a great time hanging out with the guys I knew, uh, Chris and Rodney. Uh, we had a great afternoon at the pub between on the Saturday show between uh, one was it what one thirty p.m. and five thirty. Had some really great fish and chips. Um, had a couple of beers. It was really nice. Um, so yeah, it was a really great weekend overall. I really enjoyed it. Um, I yeah, I, sp I spent the last couple of days thinking about how great it was, and um, oh, it was just it was just a very exciting festival. I mean, it was towards the end. I, I reckon I, it was getting a bit hard going. Um, just really loud, pulsating sounds and grinding tones and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, de definitely worth going, and definitely something. It's on every two years, so I'll definitely go into the next one too. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it was great. I, I got to, um, you know, there's a lot of spare time, I guess, during the day as well. So we went, uh, my friend Ten and I, um, we went out for a drive around the bays and we went um, into a few record stores and a few bookshops and stuff like that. And just just really nice to go down to Dunedin and the weather was really cool and just absorbed the, the city itself. Um, yeah, it was very cool. It was really great. Um, I really enjoyed it and uh, to top it off which brings us to the second part of the video I uh, I got some really good records um, some things I wasn't expecting to find which I did uh, I probably spent more than I was expecting but uh, yeah I'm really happy so what will happen now is we're gonna do some magic cuts and I'm gonna talk about the records
Okay, so first up, um, this is a new release by um, Sandoz Lab Technicians. I managed to pick this up down uh, from the man himself who did this wonderful artwork, Tim. So thank you, Tim, if you're watching. Um, really happy to get this. Uh, I Ever since I saw the photo of this artwork online a few months ago, I knew it was going to be something really great. Um, look at that for a cover, uh, if that doesn't get your attention. It's really cool. Uh, yeah, Grey Orders Distant Trails. Um, I, I'd um, sold a few records to Tim in the past and we had a few chats on uh, Facebook pages, so it was really good to go down there and finally meet Tim and pick up this record. Um, Tim plays in this band, he's done the artwork. And, um, oh, anyway, uh, yeah, really, really great. It's, I've listened to this through twice now. Uh, it's pressed on a Finnish label. Um, from Finland, obviously. I'm not going to try to pronounce it, um, but I'll put a link down below. Um, if you are interested in picking this up, uh, send me a message and I'll try and get in contact with Tim and we'll figure something out. I'm not sure how many is left, but I don't think this, this is pressed in that many copies. Um, it's it's really interesting as this record. It's really cool because um, nor I say normally, the band's... Uh, it, it throws you into a, a really um, experimental headspace straight away from the get-go. Whereas this sort of, like the, this art, this artwork and the first track has such a strong concept that it, tr it puts you into a different headspace or it tries to get you to, um, I guess, I mean, you can obviously see by the artwork, the name and the font, Great Orders Distant Trails. It looks like a, um, a, a Western, um, you know, a Western type theme or, you know, a Cowboys, Indians, um, you know, but with like a, a maybe even like a, a modern electronic sound to it or something like that. Like it does, it puts a concept or it puts a visual in your head before you've even heard the music. And then the first track has that feel. Um, it even has vocals in it, which is quite unusual for the band. So it puts you, you're, you're almost listening to it, trying to put the concept into the music. Um, which I think works really well. Uh, you try, you, do, uh, you know, sort of subconsciously tying back the music to the concept. Um, if that makes any sense, it probably doesn't if you've never heard this. But um, yeah, it starts off very different to what the band normally do, which I think is really cool, and really interesting. And then it sort of goes goes into this really crazy. It's not crazy, but it's it's really beautiful um, textured acoustic instruments. Um, there's definitely moments that sort of tie in later on with this uh, theme. Um, oh, it's just very, it's very, um, I'm just looking at the track titles. It's really good. It's really good. It's really um, um, spacious and textured and um, it's not noisy in terms of like, there's no big, powerful um, drones and guitar sounds, but it's definitely more on a, a uh, I don't want to say acoustic, but, um, you know, there's lots of like bells and flutes and, um, oh, let's see if there's any instruments in here. And uh, yeah, violins, bamboo flutes, clarinets, ukuleles, um, you know, percussion and field recordings. Uh, yeah, really great. I really like this. This is, uh, you know, came out this year and I'm, I'm really, you know, putting it up there. So really great, check that out. Sandos Lab Technicians, great orders, distant trails. I'll put a link down below. Check it out. All right, speaking of uh, Shane Carter, who I mentioned before, um, this is his band, uh, The Double Happies. Uh, I picked this up, been wanting it for ages. Um, How Much Time Left Please um, on Avalanche Records slash Expressway. Um, picked this up at uh, Zodiac Records. Um, yeah. Um, not not a impossible to get release, but one of the sort of harder ones. Um, my favorite track on here is "I Don't Want to See You Again." Um, so so this is a lot of this is done live too, which adds a really nice atmosphere to it. Um, just really good uh, uh, post punk, I, I guess you would call it, with uh, with Shane Carter's personality really starting to come through. Uh, yeah, um, fantastic, really good. Um, this one, I was out with um, Rodney and Chris, and this was um, between the 
one thirty Saturday show and the 5 p.m. show. And we had a bit of time to kill, so we went to the pub and had some food and some drinks. But before that, we decided to stop into an art gallery, which is owned and run by Robert Scott, who is a lead singer of The Bats, it's another band I've talked about a few times, and I've often wore the T-shirt in these videos. Um, and, and he was in there, and we had a chat to him, and he, we noticed he had... Well, Rodney noticed we had some records. He had some records and some bins, so he, he rushed over there and had a flick through. And I was like, all right, I'm going to look around the art gallery. And uh, Chris had a look through. And then I was like, all right, I'm third. I'm not going to find anything in here. Dig through. And they both skipped over um, this record here, which is uh, Modern Rock by The Clean. And this came out in 1994. And it's getting very pricey on Discogs. And this was priced really cheap. Um, it is a bit noisy, but for what it goes for online, uh, I, you know, I've been wanting this for ages. I really like this record. Um, what's the song called? Linga Longo is really great. Um, yeah. I have been wanting this for a while, so I was really happy to pick this up to the point where the other two guys were a bit um, miffed that they happened to miss it. Um, yeah, this, this is really great. Um, yeah. what wonderful artwork in the Hamish Kilgore style. Um, yeah. To, to, to buy a record by The Clean, you know, in Port Chalmers from a member of The Clean, uh, you know, that's very cool in itself, you know. So, super happy. Got that one. Speaking of uh, members of bands and buying records from them, not specifically from them, but uh, I picked up a upgrade copy of this this wonderful, wonderful um, Baroque pop um, record here, uh, One Year by Colin Blunstone. Now, I'd been looking for a copy of this for years, and I found a copy last year quite cheap, but it was really, um, it was a New Zealand pressing, and it was really noisy. Uh, so I, I found this secondhand uh, original US press. Oh, I think it's a slightly later US press um, for really cheap. And I grabbed it straight away. And when I got it back to where we were staying, I noticed there was a couple of sig uh, names written on here. One on the inside, I'm not going to show you it. And one on the label. And they are, the name is uh, Martin Phillips, who is the lead singer and basically the man behind The Chills. Another famous uh, band here. So that was really cool um, that that's from his personal collection. Um, apparently he he allegedly dropped off a lot of records over time to manage sort of his substance abuse. Um, I don't know if it, that, you know, that's, I'm not saying that's completely true, but, you know, it was mentioned to me that um, he would often drop records in um, and just purge a lot of his collection. Um, so, you know, it's, it's cool that I, I've got a, a record with his name on it, um, but... Also, more specifically, his style of music, I can hear, um, you know, in, in terms of this, in terms of uh, just really, if you know the chills, you know there's a big focus on in intricacy and, um, you know, strings, especially in the later stuff, and just really well-crafted pop songs. Um, so, you know, I, I, I can imagine or I like to imagine that um, this record would have been a big influence on the chill sound, and this is Martin's copy. So that's kind of a cool, nice thing. Um yeah, but I, I don't need to talk about this record. Uh, this is absolutely wonderful, really gorgeous. Um, reminds me very much of Winter Time when I listen to it. Um, Colin Blundstone, the lead singer of The Zombies. Um, check it out if you don't know it already, although I'm sure a lot of you will. Um, all right, we've got three. This is getting on a bit long, so I'm going to speed it up a bit. Um, this is something I've been after for a while. Um, Bernie Maupin, uh, The Jewel and the Lotus on ECM. Really wonderful Um beautiful gorgeous uh, world fusion record um yeah really takes you into a different space I, I love this it's getting quite hard to find now and i was really happy to finally get a copy um you've got on here um bernie maupin herbie hancock charles buster williams billy hart and charles sullivan um lots of uh, yeah marimbas on here and percussion elements is it's a really beautiful record um yeah really takes you into a different headspace um on, on a similar um vein is this uh, Cadona record uh, Colin Walcott Don Cherry and Nana Vasconcelos um, you've got a lot of um, world instruments and textures on this one too um, yeah being after this for a while uh, really happy to get it uh, absolutely iconic cover as well Cadona yeah ECM so I'm really happy to get those two ECMs that I've been missing um, and probably my find of the, the whole thing 
for something I've been after for ages, and I couldn't quite believe it was there. This is uh, Faust, Munich, and Elsewhere from 1986 on Recommended Records. Um, just look at that color. Uh, absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Um, I, I've been after this for quite a long time, and I've only ever listened to clips online. It's just really cool, really, um, just really driving, a lot more so than a lot of earlier stuff they've put out. Um, just a real big focus on... Um, uh, a propelling groove that goes through the tracks um absolutely wonderful so this is sort of like various bits of unreleased tapes and stuff like that, that they recorded around the time they were sort of went on hiatus um but yeah i really recommend this 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 goes with those classic four faust records you know um i'm not gonna talk is it there's four there's um i put the faust tapes in there so far faust four Am I missing one? I don't think I am. Maybe this makes up the quadrilogy. Um, Return of a Legend, Music and Munich and Elsewhere, Faust. Yeah, that's a great one. And then we're going to end on a really nice... Oh, the price tag is still on this one. Uh, this is Maxine Funker, Lace. Uh, really beautiful lo-fi folk uh, recording. I say folk, but it's, it's sort of in a world of its own. Just, yeah, really beautiful, gorgeous... Um, soft textures and sounds and um the fact that it's recorded in such a lo-fi way adds this really eeriness to the music um really soft soft sounds and um yeah I, i've got a other record before this um so I, I want to sort of get the companion piece and tie it all together so that was the end of the video um sorry it was a bit long i just really enjoyed my time down in dunedin and port Chalmers, and i think there's some amazing talent down there doing some amazing stuff and i just want to encourage you guys to please check out some of the artists and some of the names that i mentioned um because that's what i want to do i want to share with you the stuff that i'm really into um yeah i mean a lot, a lot of these artists don't really have recorded stuff but a lot of them do so uh yeah i'm going to post a lot of links down below um thank you again to dunedin sound for letting me share some of these wonderful clips and audio bits uh, and photographs so yeah thank you again for that thank you to everybody for watching um i hope i've inspired you to please check out some of these artists um because i i am feeling very inspired by them so i'm turning translating my inspiration to to you guys to uh please check them out all right guys thank you so much i'll see you all soon cheers